Orson Welles. George Orson Welles was an American director, actor, screenwriter and producer who is remembered for his innovative work in radio, theater and film. He is considered to be one of the greatest and most influential filmmakers of all time. While in his 20s, Welles directed high-profile stage productions for the Federal Theater Project, including an adaptation of Macbeth with an entirely African-American cast and the political musical The Cradle Will Rock. In 1937, he and John Houseman founded the Mercury Theater, an independent repertory theater company that presented a series of productions on Broadway through 1941, including Caesar, 1937, a Broadway adaptation of William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. In 1938, his radio anthology series The Mercury Theater on the Air gave Wells the platform to find international fame as the director and narrator of a radio adaptation of H.G. Wells' novel The War of the Worlds, which caused some listeners to believe that an invasion by extraterrestrial beings was in fact occurring. Although reports of panic were mostly false and overstated, they rocketed Wells to notoriety. His first film was Citizen Kane, 1941 which is consistently ranked as one of the greatest films ever made, and which he co-wrote, produced, directed and starred in as Charles Foster Kane. Wells released 12 other features, the most acclaimed of which include The Magnificent Ambersons, 1942, The Lady from Shanghai, 1947, Touch of Evil, 1958, The Trial, 1962, Chimes at Midnight, 1965, and F for Fake, 1973. His distinctive directorial style featured layered and nonlinear narrative forms, uses of lighting such as chiaroscuro, unusual camera angles, sound techniques borrowed from radio, deep focus shots and long takes. He has been praised as the ultimate auteur. The Mercury Theatre's radio adaptation of The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells October 30, 1938, had brought Wells instant fame. The combination of the news bulletin form of the performance with the between break style spinning habits of listeners was later reported to have created widespread confusion among listeners who failed to hear the introduction, although the extent of this confusion has come into question. Panic was reportedly spread among listeners who believed the fictional news reports of a Martian invasion. The myth of the result created by the combination was reported as fact around the world and disparagingly mentioned by Adolf Hitler in a public speech. The Mercury Theatre on the Air became the Campbell Playhouse in December 1938 Wells's growing fame drew Hollywood offers, lures that the independent-minded Wells resisted at first. The Mercury Theatre on the Air, which had been a sustaining show, without sponsorship, was picked up by Campbell Soup and renamed the Campbell Playhouse. The Mercury Theatre on the Air made its last broadcast on December 4, 1938, and the Campbell Playhouse began five days later. Wells began commuting from California to New York for the two Sunday broadcasts of the Campbell Playhouse after signing a film contract with RKO Pictures in August 1939. In November 1939, production of the show moved from New York to Los Angeles. Citizen Kane. RKO rejected Wells's first two movie proposals, but agreed on the third offer, Citizen Kane. Wells co-wrote, produced and directed the film, and performed the lead role. Wells conceived the project with screenwriter Herman J. Mankiewicz, who was writing radio plays for the Campbell Playhouse. Mankiewicz based the original outline of the film's script on the life of William Randolph Hearst, whom he knew socially and came to hate after being exiled from Hearst's circle. After agreeing on the storyline and character, Wells supplied Mankiewicz with 300 pages of notes and put him under contract to write the first draft screenplay under the supervision of John Houseman. Wells wrote his own draft, then drastically condensed and rearranged both versions and added scenes of his own. The industry accused Wells of underplaying Mankiewicz's contribution to the script, but Wells countered the attacks by saying, at the end, naturally, I was the one making the picture, after all, who had to make the decisions. I used what I wanted of Manx and, rightly or wrongly, kept what I liked of my own. The delay in the film's release and uneven distribution contributed to mediocre results at the box office. After it ran its course theatrically, Citizen Kane was retired to the vault in 1942. In post-war France, however, the film's reputation grew after it was seen for the first time in 1946. In the United States, 
It began to be re-evaluated after it began to appear on television in 1956. That year it was also re-released theatrically, and film critic Andrew Saris described it as the great American film, and the work that influenced the cinema more profoundly than any American film since the birth of a nation. Citizen Kane is now widely hailed as one of the greatest films ever made. Orson Welles. May 6, 1915 to October 10, 1985.